Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining CCA as we welcome Defence Construction Canada's National Director of Contract Services, Melanie Pouliot, to provide an important update on changes and updates to procurement. My name is Jorgen Kvist, and I'm the Director of Industry Practices and Procurement at CCA, and we're happy to collaborate with DCC today to present this webinar for our registrants. Melanie will explain the changes to the industrial security process, the Official Languages Act, and various opportunities with Indigenous businesses. Melanie began her career in the private sector as an engineer after earning a bachelor's degree in applied science in chemical engineering from the University of Ottawa. She joined DCC in 2007 as a contract coordinator, and in 2009, she was promoted to team leader contract services, where she led a team responsible for procurement plans for D&D's capital infrastructure program. She subsequently transferred to the head office as technical specialist procurement, where she focused on delivering public-private partnerships. She was promoted to national director of contract services in 2017. I will now invite Melanie to have the floor. Thank you, Jurgen, for the introduction. Uh, so as and I will pro be providing an update on what's new in procurement at DCC. So there's been a lot of changes over the last um, few years. Um, so I will be explaining those changes. So uh, what I will be covering today is one, the modernization of the Official Languages Act as it will impact how we do business with the Department of National Defense moving forward. I'll touch base on the Indigenous procurement and also on the security clearance the sponsorship process. So for those of you that have been used to doing business with DCC, um, the way that we've been uh, ensuring that companies had clearance in advance of procurement has changed. So I will do a quick update on that. And for the last item, I will uh, touch on the embodied carbon and construction materials. So this is actually something that will come into effect for all federal uh, government departments at the end of the month of December. So I'll, I'll give you quite a quick update and um, so you will have the information in advance. So first for the modernization of the Official Languages Act, um, the government and working to modernize the official language regime, including recent policy changes and upcoming amendments to the Official Languages Act. So in addition to that modernization, Treasury Board um, Canada Secretariat updated the government contracting policy. Uh, so now it is called the Directive on the Management of Procurement, um, and it touches on the language of posting. And that change affects how DCC supports the Department of National Defense in the delivery of its infrastructure and rental programs. So uh, just a quick, um, a quick overview of what it used to say. Um, there was a, an Appendix F that described a, a risk-based approach to the official languages obligations. And quickly what it was saying is that non-standardized documents such as drawings and specifications could be provided in only one official language when the federal institution could substantiate based on relevant information regarding the industry what they would be requested in that language only. So basically DC's approach um, at the time um, was that any procurements that were done on the national level or in the area that was uh, in the bilingual designated bilingual region of Canada, we would post documents in both languages. However, any areas that were designated as unilingual, we were posting plans and spec only in one official languages. Um, but now with the directive on the management of procurement, they've removed that risk-based approach. And basically what it's saying is that we have to publish all information and documentation related to a solicitation or a contract in both official languages and the communication with suppliers and contractors and providing them with access to information related to procurement in both official languages. So quite a, you know, a different approach to how we used to do business. So um, when that change happened, we uh, looked at options um, to still meet the OLA, um, the new directive on the management of procurement, but also streamlining to ensure that we are as efficient as possible um, to deliver the program of the, national, the Department of National Defense. So starting this month, what we are doing is we are implementing open construction source list um, at each D&D location, so at each basis and wings. 
And we will be using those open construction sources to implement construction contracts that are under 10 million. The scope may be commercial, residential, industrial, institutional, and civil engineering. The open construction sources will also be used for contracts set aside for indigenous owned businesses under the procurement strategy for indigenous businesses, so PSIB, also under 10 million. And some of those contracts may include a percentage to be subcontracted to indigenous businesses, so um, indigenous benefit plans, IBPs. If the open construction source lists are being advertised on Mercs and Canada Buy, and contractors who wish to apply for the list and be invited to bid on our tender will be required to submit their name for the open construction source list to MERS. So basically, when applying for an open construction source list, a contractor or supplier will only have to provide their legal company and all their preferred language for tender documents, control documents, and changes during the execution of the contract. So for your awareness, we have uh, now posted the Atlantic and the Pacific regions um, week, and we are posted this the Quebec region, and then next week we will be posting the Western region and the National Capital region. Uh, so the intent is really to have everything published on Mercs and Canada buys before uh, the end of December, and, and the source will then be really out. Um, they will be open to general trade and civil contractors and suppliers that are in the field of construction. Contractors and suppliers will require an active Mercs account to apply for the open construction source, even to and also to bid on DCC tenders. Uh, those open construction sources will be placed in duration of three years, and we will start using them as of April 1st, 2023. Uh, what's important to understand also is that those, those add on Mercs and Canada will be published at the full duration of the three years. So companies can at any point over the next three years be added to the sources if the open construction sources are, are interested in doing PCC. Um, so the next topic that I will is the indigenous procurement. As you know, rural government has mandated that at least five total be awarded directly or indirectly to a regional business. For background, the federal government purchases approximately 20 billion worth of goods and services annually through government procurement. So 5% of that amount represents 1.1 billion. Um, and I'm, you know, for us, these, we are probably a billion in contract annually. So we're looking at um, awarding about $50 million uh, directly to indigenous businesses. So um, how are we um, doing that? Uh, well, we seen has jointly developed a procurement strategy. Um, so quickly, uh, not to go too much into the details, uh, strategy provides an overview for us of policies legislation affecting indigenous procurement. So uh, in order to uh, support uh, indigenous participation in procurement, uh, DCC and DND has jointly developed a procurement strategy. And the strategy provides an overview of policies affecting indigenous procurement. Um, and that's categorized to the indigenous landscape, which was really important for DCC uh, and the Department of National Defense so that we could buy contracts that could be set aside for indigenous businesses, but also to determine a percentage for indigenous benefit plans um, in contracts that were not being set aside for indigenous businesses, but would include a certain percentage of contract to those indigenous businesses. And the strategy also identifies effective procurement approaches to maximize the participation of indigenous business, as also it includes progressive targets by fiscal to achieve the 5% mandate by 2024. Um, this, in this business, the, the whole state initiative of, of producing the indigenous uh, procurement generates other benefits you see. Um, through that, we've been able to build a relationship with other government departments and not for organizations involved in similar awareness campaigns. And has led to offers to attend other events. We basically, uh, D&D and DCC, have main just to maximize value of 
contracts for the indigenous businesses. So we uh, set aside contracts for indigenous businesses under the strategy for indigenous businesses. And so typically that second approach will be more nature capitalist. Uh, the indigenous benefit plan is a percentage to be subtracted indigenous businesses. And the AGP did it. So, you know, in our uh, research to understand the market, we've been uh, able to identify, you know, that a lot of indigenous businesses will are mostly small enterprises. So, uh, you know, for that those smaller contracts will uh, will see the decide those contracts for indigenous businesses and when the are much larger in value indigenous businesses. We have also developed an indigenous business database. Uh, that database uh, we draw from a variety of sources, including businesses directories maintained by Indigenous Services Canada and also by the Indian Council for Aboriginal Businesses, the CCAB. It contains 400 plus companies in the vicinity of Canadian Forces Basins and Wing that provides a variety of services. It's continuously updated with the names of companies that are bidding on our piece of tenders or exchange interest being added. It contains contact information types of services offered and in some cases security clearance as we do have a lot of contracts that require security clearances and also bonding capacity. It is consulted by us, DCC, and by DND to determine if a project is a good candidate for PSIB or for the inclusion of an IBP. Just to show, um, you know, how we've been doing over the last year since we have implemented that Indigenous procurement strategy, uh, in 2019-20, we had achieved 1.7%. $10 million of what we had awarded. In 2021, we went up to 2.63, sorry, percent. And then uh, last fiscal year, we went up to 7.3%. 7, 7 and right now, as we then at the end of Q2 of this fiscal year, we're now at 8.8%. So you can see that we have, um, since fiscal year 1920, uh, we have steadily increased the percentage of the annual value of its contract that has been awarded directly or indirectly to Indigenous owned businesses. And in fiscal year 2022, uh, we have exceeded uh, the target of 5%, and we are on track to, to meet that 5% target again this fiscal year. So, our objective is really to meet that 5% um, every fiscal year. So, our commitment to reconciliation with Indigenous people. Uh, in 2020, uh, DCC began the certification process under the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Businesses, um, so the CCAB, uh, Progressive Aboriginal Relation, the PAR program. In 2021, we obtained the PAR Committed Phase 1 status, and we also are applying for the PAR Committed Phase 2 um, this month. So the main elements for the program, uh, for those that may not be familiar, is um, leadership measures, Indigenous employment, Indigenous business development, and community relations. So as of 2020, every DCC employee is required to complete Indigenous cultural awareness training, and we are committed in attaining the bronze certification at the point. For contract security, uh, for 21, the Canadian Security Program, CSP under Public Services and Procurement Canada, PSPC, changed the process for obtaining security clearance for companies. On February 8, 2022, DCC signed an agreement with CSP to ensure that DCC could continue sponsoring companies prior to award so that contracts could be awarded. As a result, DCC, uh, we had to change the advanced notices process and link APNs to specific projects. So basically only companies bidding on contracts requiring a security can be sponsored by designated organization screening, DOS, or a facility clearance receipt. DCC can no longer sponsor peace and safeguarding capability, DAC or contract award, which is something that we could do uh, before the change of approach in a clearing company in September 2021. And also companies can no longer clear personnel prior to contract award, all done after the contract is awarded. 
And for the last topic today, I want to touch base quickly on the embodied Karen Inclusion material. So this is a new treasure board directive for low carbon concrete that will into effect on number 31st, 2022. Uh, so this new uh, directive will include is that projects of million and more than a cubic meter of mixed concrete with a design starting after December 31st, 2022 will require uh, the disclosure of carbon footprint to achieve a reduction of embodied in concrete use compared to a regional average. That $10 million threshold will be in. So uh, DCC and D&D &D have pilot projects in two regions in Ontario and the Pacific region um, to identify any issues, challenges, and lessons learned um, from embodied carbon construction material. Um, so we have right now a specified the low carbon concrete in two contracts. Um, Air destruction hasn't been completed yet, so we're still uh, to, to identify any issues, challenges, and potential lessons learned that we may leave on this. And the next step, just for everyone's so this ends uh, the session for today. If there's ever questions, you can always, um, again, Ms. Mandarin, the National Director of Services at DCC, and you can join me by email uh, as presented on this slide. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie, for a great presentation on important updates DCC has been working towards. Uh, I would like to thank all of our participants today, and we hope you enjoy the webinar.